In this video, you'll learn how to set up a salmon aquarium with the Fisheries and Oceans Canada Stream to Sea program. Please note that there are many ways to set up a salmon aquarium with different types of pumps and filter media. Please check with your education coordinator before setting up your aquarium. Remove any debris from the tank. A small broom and dustpan works well for this. Next, you'll disinfect the tank and other equipment. Do not disinfect the filter media that goes inside the fluval pump. That includes foam pads, the black polycarbon inserts, and the small white Biomax pellets. Collect all of the other components that will be in the water during the incubation process. Place them in the bottom of the tank and fill the tank with enough water to cover them. You can use a bucket or a flexible piece of tubing if you have one. To disinfect, use white vinegar or ovidine. In this case, we're using about a quarter cup of ovidine and pouring it directly into the tank. Use a sponge or a cloth to scrub the sides of the inside of the tank and the heat exchanger, the part of the chiller that sits inside the tank. You'll also disinfect the rocks that will sit in the bottom of the tank. Here we have about four liters of rocks in a large bucket. Add water to the bucket until the rocks are submerged, then add a quarter cup of disinfectant, in this case, ovidine. Agitate the rocks, so that the ovidine solution can fully coat them. Leave the disinfecting rocks, tank, and other components to sit for at least two hours. I find that doing the disinfecting step the day before you set up the tank is handy if you have the time. Thoroughly rinse all of the rocks, the components, the inside of the tank, and the chiller heat exchanger. Whether you've used vinegar or ovidine as a disinfectant, it's very important that everything be completely rinsed away. Emptying the residual disinfectant water from the tank can be challenging, and it's helpful to have a buddy help you with this part. It's okay to lift one end of the tank up, but please don't lean the tank onto the countertop. This damages the edges of the tank and can lead to breakage and leaks. You can create a siphon using a piece of flexible tubing. This takes patience to learn, but will come in handy. Or use a variety of large and small containers to scoop the water out of the tank. Rinse the sides of the tank with tap water as you empty the disinfectant water out. This will ensure that the sides of the tank are also rinsed completely. Once you've finished disinfecting and thoroughly rinsing the equipment, it's time to assemble the tank. To start, rinse the filter media and set aside. If you use a Fluval U3 pump and saved half of your Biomax pellets from last year, now is the time to get them out. To assemble the fluval pump, start by placing the two white foam pads into the outer blue cartridges. Make sure the white foam goes under the small blue tabs. Next, place the polycarbon pad, the black and white pad, on top of the white foam pad. It doesn't need to go underneath the small blue tabs. It should just be held in lightly at the top and the bottom of the blue cartridge. Fill the middle cartridge with Biomax pellets and make sure it can close. If you've saved some Biomax pellets from last year, combine them half and half with new pellets to fill the cartridge. Now you'll place all three cartridges into the fluval pump. There is only one way that they'll all go in, so if it doesn't work, just try again and you'll get it. Attach the bracket to the back of the fluval and make sure it clicks into place. Make sure you have at least two suction cups on the bracket to hold it in place in the tank. 
Now it's time to fill the tank. If you're using gravel, start by laying an even layer into the bottom of the tank. Check with your education coordinator for recommendations on how much gravel you should be using in your area at this particular time. If you're using crushed oyster shells, sprinkle those on next. Finally, place the rocks into the tank to give the alevin somewhere to hide. Remember, you will remove every single one of these rocks from very cold water the day you release your fry. Also keep in mind that if you use several layers of small rocks, alevin can get pinned underneath them as they grow. So I like to use a single layer of rocks that are about the size of a golf ball. Before filling the tank, allow the cold water to run for at least five minutes. Use a plate or a frisbee as a diffuser so the stream of water doesn't push the gravel and the rocks around too much. Fill the tank using either a bucket or flexible tubing. If your aquarium cart isn't in its final location, be sure to get it there before the tank is half full. Once the tank is more than half full, it's very difficult to move without spilling. Fill the tank to within about five centimeters of the top. Submerge the pump fully, moving it around to allow all air bubbles to escape. If there's an airlock in the pump, it won't work. Use the suction cups to attach the fluval pump to one of the short ends of the tank. Adjust its height so that the venturi valve, or the snorkel that takes air in, is above the surface and the outflow is just at the surface. You can fine tune this at any time. Just remember, if you can't hear your pump doing anything, it's probably pushed too far underwater. You should always be able to hear it running. Very gently place the heat exchanger from the chiller into the water. Remember the coolant from the chiller runs through fragile copper lines. The more you bend those lines, which are covered with black foam, the more likely you are to damage the chiller. Adjust the heat exchanger so it sits parallel to the back of the tank without touching the glass. This is tricky, but you can do it. To prevent ice buildup on the heat exchanger, angle the outflow hood from the fluval pump so that the water flows towards the heat exchanger on the back wall of the tank. This will help move the coldest water coming off of the heat exchanger around the tank. And just a quick note on this piece of equipment, it's called a heat exchanger, the part of the chiller that's sitting in the tank. That doesn't mean it's heating the water. We make sure that our chiller is set to a cooling program. So it's called a heat exchanger, but it's not heating the water. Next, you'll install the temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is at the end of the thin gray wire that comes out of the chiller. Most of the temperature sensors are now covered with a white PVC pipe protector called a probe well. The probe well is meant to keep the temperature sensor dry so that it lasts longer and functions properly. If you suspect that there is water in the probe well, or if you can move the gray wire in and out of the probe well, let your education coordinator know. There are ways that we can waterproof the temperature sensor using a marine grade heat shrink. If you think that the probe well may be leaking, but you need to get your tank operational, place it into the tank, but so that the top of the probe well is just above the surface of the water, so no water can get inside. To get the chiller to work, you need to program the thermostat. 
When you first look at the thermostat, the number that you're seeing in the screen is the temperature that the temperature sensor is currently reading. So the temperature of the water in the tank. In order to change the settings, we use the set button. When you press set the first time, you'll see a C for Celsius or an F for Fahrenheit. Just use the arrows to switch between units, whichever one you'd like to use. When you press set again, you're going to see the target temperature. So in this example, right now the target temperature is set to eight degrees. In the example, I'd like to move it up to nine, so I use the up arrow to do that. Next time you press set, you'll see the differential or the range. This number should never be set higher than two, but make sure you check with your education coordinator where you should have it. When you press set again, you'll see either C1 or H1. H1 stands for heating, C1 stands for cooling, so it should always say C1, never H1. When you press set a final time, it will cycle back to the beginning and show you the temperature that the water is currently at. You have to go through all of those sets in order for the thermostat to memorize what you've just programmed into it. And you can double check that by going back through all of the settings. If you have any questions about how to set your chiller, don't be afraid to ask your education coordinator. The chiller can be challenging to set, so please ask questions. If your chiller includes a fan adjustment dial, just make sure that's down at low. It should never be off. And about once a year, it's a good idea to take some compressed air and just dust off the radiator and the fan blades of the chiller. This will help it last a lot longer. You wanna make sure it stays dust free. Now you can place the egg basket in the tank. The flow from the fluval pump will likely push it to the opposite end of the tank. If the egg basket spins around, use a piece of fishing line to attach it to the end of the tank. In order to keep the inside of the tank dark for developing eggs and alevin, and also to help insulate the tank and keep the cold in, you'll set up a styrofoam jacket or a reflectix jacket around the outside of the tank. Once you've completed these steps, let your salmon aquarium run for at least five to 10 days before any eggs are placed in the tank. After that, you're ready for the eggs to be delivered and placed in the egg basket so you can watch them grow into alevin and then eventually fry. Thank you so much for your participation in the Stream to See program. If you have any questions, just let your education coordinator know.